So I think there are like four major areas that you should kind of be aware of when thinking about the differences between a PA and an MD. Most of you guys did not welcome back to my channel. For those of you new, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. So I had a question posed to me and I've had this question posed to me like on several occasions, but when I recently went to the NIH Community College Health Fair thing that they do annually, a lot of people were like, well, what's the difference between a PA and an MD? So that is what this video is going to address. It's important to just kind of understand those roles and, and what we do in those various different roles. So I think there are like four major areas that you should kind of be aware of when thinking about the differences between a PA and an MD. And and the initial area is obviously your education and your cost of that education. So on average, PA school is about two years. It can be longer, it can be three years, it can be five, it can be six years, depending on if you're going into a direct entry PA program or if you're going into a dual degree PA program, which is like your MD, your MPH, so your master's in public health, and then your MPAM or you know, physician MPAS, it's, it varies, but your master's in physician assistant medicine or studies, and and then your master's in public health will give you a three-year program as opposed to the typical two-year program that most schools do. When it comes to med school, obviously you're going to school for um, four years and then from that you're gonna have a residency uh, so you get more specialized training for the particular specialty that you wanna go into and then um, after you go through residency and you become a fellow and such, then you'll become an attending and you'll be a full-blown physician practicing autonomously. So the PA aspect is you're going to school for an average of two years, you come out and you're practicing right out of school. Your typical um, like kind of things that they're focusing on for PA school initially is you have a lot of clinical hours. You have to have a strong GPA. So um, 3.5 or above is typical like the, the average of most PA students. But it's the average. So there are students with lower GPAs and obviously higher GPAs, but 3.5 and above is typically what you'll see um, and very, very heavy clinical experience. Whereas med school, it's not so much on the clinical experience, but more so on the grades. So you're gonna have like an average of like 3.7 um, as your GPA, your overall GPA, and like maybe like a 3.6 for your science GPA. So those are like the key differences with respect to your initial education. Now the cost of that education is also different in that as PAs, you will, when you're going into PA school, which is grad school, you're going to pay on average anywhere from a range of like 50000 to about 110000 for the two-year degree. Um, and that obviously varies from in-state to out-of-state. Uh, those different tuitions will vary in price and cost and also the type of school. So if it's a community college versus a four-year college, um, that also uh, kind of affects the price. Now, with respect to med school, you're doing four years, like I said before, but for those four years, you're incurring a debt of about 200, that's what I said, 200,000 to about 300,000. So um, just understanding the cost with the various different programs is important as well. So I think that's the main, one of the main differences between a PA and an MD. As far as our roles and duties, I kind of delineated that before, but I think that that's like the second main difference between a PA and an MD. So obviously, like I said, when you're in the ED, if you're going through the fast track, like, you know, kind of more acute things, um, not really a severe MVA, you're going to see the PA on that fast track realm. Um, there's usually one PA or two PAs in a physician um, or one PA in a physician. So you'll see them um, on that fast track. But Things like, you know, um, you know CVAs or um, subarachnoid hemorrhages or um, PEs, although they may come into the fast track, if they uh, are, if it's like a high suspicion that this is something like super nefarious, then you'll go to main side and that's where you will see like, you know, you'll see like some PAs are over on main side as well. You'll see uh, the residents, um, but you'll mainly see physicians over there. Uh, so the physician is the one that's taking on the more like 
harder cases, I guess you could say. And I mean, that's no slight to the PA profession. I know there are lots of PAs that feel like, hey, I can manage this, I can handle that. And that, and you know, that's absolutely like true that some of them can, but typically the harder the case, the physician is the one who is handling that. Also, um, when you're coming to like another specialty in terms of surgery, PAs do not perform surgery, they assist in surgery. So although we can do like simple lack, um, repairs and things of that nature, suturing, inding, and we gain those skills in PA school. When it comes to being a surgical PA, um, be it a general surgery PA or you know one of the other subspecialties like neurology or vascular, you're not performing the surgery. You're not the one directing the show in this. You are um, assisting in that. And so that is another like major importance um, and difference with respect to the PA and the MD profession. I think another difference that a lot of people kind of take into consideration as well is compensation. So obviously as PAs, like your general starting salary is about $100,000 and up. So you make, there are, I've seen PAs that make $200,000, um, and a little bit more and you know, they are like the anomaly or sometimes they're just like working their behinds off and that's okay. So there is an option to make more money in the profession depending on how hard, how hard you want to work. But, um, as an MD, you're making anywhere from $200,000 and up, um, initially in your starting role. And I did a video on the various different salaries for these PAs. And so if you want to see like the jobs that make more money, if that's the thing that you're interested in, then you should kind of just look in my search bar and type that in. But obviously, you know, different specialties uh, give you more money, be it for the PA profession or the MD profession, but physicians do make more money than PAs. I mean, and they deserve to, they've gone to school longer, they've had more training, and so it is what it is. I think like the last major difference between a PA and an MD is the flexibility and the autonomy. So um, as PAs in many states, we still are, are working in collaboration with our attending physician um, and you will have a delegation agreement with them. And so there is like a supervisory role that the physician pays. Now they're not like place, they're not like hovering over your back, making sure that you check all these boxes, obviously, but they are there should you need uh, any guidance or assistance in anything, because we don't know it all. And so you're there to talk to your attending physician and, you know, collaborate and, and see, hey, like, I haven't seen this before, or I'm not used to this. Can you um, give me your take on this, uh, this patient? And that is fine. And so that's what PAs uh, typically, like that's our general role, right? But when it comes to the MDs, they don't usually have any of those stipulations or delegations agreements on their license. Uh, they can practice autonomously with no oversight at all. And they can also obviously own their own practices and things like that. Now PAs can own practices, but there are some like loopholes and things that you have to kind of jump through and go around to make sure that you own your own practice uh, and like how much percentage of that practice you have to own. And those are things that you can look into um, at your various different state level, but typically MDs don't have any type of oversight when it comes to things like that, I mean, PAs do. And so if these are things that you really want um, to have, like you you know, you wanna have the autonomy and you wanna make uh, you know, 300 plus thousand dollars a year and um, you wanna get in debt for $300,000, <laughs> No, but I mean, these are the, the, the various different things that I've talked about. Then, you know, it's important to understand like, okay, well, maybe I want to be a physician as opposed to a PA. But those are the main differences. Although we do function um, similarly in many areas, there are areas that, you know, your role is specifically designated and understanding your role uh, is important in any profession because you don't want to step outside of those boundaries. So thank you so much for asking me that question. Um, I hope I did a good job answering it for you. If you have any other questions with regard to that particular question or any question in general, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at it on the PA and I will talk to you guys next time.